Hey everyone, welcome to Casey 3D Sparks. Today we're going to be making dungeon tiles for D&D. So they are going to be one inch in size. They're not going to be stone or anything. They're going to look more like an actual castle tile. Uh, of course, you can go back in and make any kind of upgrade in the details that you would like. This is more for just the basics. Here's how to make um, the tiles in Blender so that way it's ready to print right on your own printer at home. So, if you like this tutorial or want to see more like this, please like and subscribe and comment what else you'd like to see. If you want me to go in more detail, how to make them interlocking, that would be awesome. I'd really love your feedback. But, let's go ahead and get right to it. So, I already have Blender loaded up here. Um, if you don't have it downloaded, I'll go ahead and link it down below. And I already minimized my animation keys because obviously you're not going to key any scenes. So I hit my camera and my lamp. I'm going to change the name of this to Castle Tile. Except I had a caps lock on for some reason. There we go. Castle Tile. So the scene here you are going to want to change because it is in Blender units right now and I like to model in inches. You can do centimeters or meters or however you like, of course. This is just my preference. Next thing I want to do is change the dimensions of my cube. Now, if you've seen my other videos before, you, you typically know that I like to go into the display and change the scale of the grid to a quarter of an inch. But today, we are I'm going to leave this as a one inch scale, so that way each of my dungeon tiles fills up one of these squares, and it's just a little bit easier for me to look at. So we're going to leave that. And we're going to go back up here and change the dimensions of our cube. So we, I want to make a 4x4 four four, uh, dungeon tile. So I'm just going to change this to 4 inch by 4 inch. And then for the Z axis, we definitely don't need a 4 inch tall dungeon tile. I mean, if you do, then by all means, make a 4 inch tall dungeon tile. But for me, I'm only going to do one eighth inch thick because I don't really want to waste that much plastic on it. I'm going to get rid of my thin menu. I'm done with that. I'm going to go into top view here. You can see that I, my grid fills out my square nicely. You can see where each tile is going to be. Perfect. So what we're going to do, I'm hitting Z so that way it's in wireframe view where you can see exactly where the lines are going to meet up. I'm going to hit Control R. I am not in edit mode. Helps if you're in edit mode. Hit Tab to enter edit mode. And then Control R to add in three edge loops. I'm just going to scroll up, three edge loops, and hit Escape so they fall exactly where they are. And you can see that they fall in line with each of these grid lines. And that's exactly what I want. Perfect. I'm going to do that horizontally as well and they will also fall exactly where I want. Yay! So now we have a flat grid. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is essentially add the lines so that way these ones will be our grout lines for the tiles. So we're going to go into each of these um, tiles and add in two more edge loops. So I'm going to go here, add two edge loops, hit escape, and then we're going to size that by the x-axis and go up just as uh, right there. We don't want our grout lines too thick, but I think that will be just the right size. And then you'll want to make sure you kind of get um, the same dimensions on each tile. So take your time with this. Make sure you're happy with the lines. It's easier to fix it now than until once you go in and add more detail. And it just becomes a hassle trying to move each one, make them look pretty. So make sure you do it horizontally as well. Size that by the y-axis. Are up. Right there. Whoa, how can we do that? Oh, I don't want to do that. I 
there. Perfect. So now what we're going to do, we only want to grab the top grout lines because I want to leave the bottom flat. So make sure you don't have anything selected. I'm going to do B and do these group selects here. Move once. And grab all of your grout lines. Perfect. Okay. So you should have all this top grout selected and you can circle around, make sure you don't have anything extra. I'm going to go into side view and essentially all you have to do is grab this blue Z axis arrow and bring it down to about a third of the way. You want it to be somewhat dramatic so that way uh, if your printer isn't very highly detailed. You can make sure that you can definitely see those lines for when you're moving your minis around. Um, yeah, make sure that it's highly defined. So I don't want to say halfway, probably about here. Awesome. So what I'm going to do next, just to add a little bit more detail, I want to make the edges of the tiles a little bit more rounded instead of sharp because usually when you look at a tile they're nice and smooth you're not going to cut your feet on them that kind of thing so we're going to go back in here and I tried doing the bevel tool on this but for some reason it wasn't working that well for me so we are just going to go ahead and grab each of these faces and we're going to change this to individual origins, I think. <laughs> Find out in a second. Now we're going to hit E to extrude, go up, and just pull that up just a little bit and size it. Yeah, that's right. The reason I changed it to individual origins is because if I left it on 3D cursor, it's just going to, yeah, do that. That's not what I want. Or uh, median point, sorry. Left it on median point, that's not what I want. So we are going to do individual origins, so that way each tile will shrink in to its own tile. So we're going to size that down, make it a little bit more rounded, we'll do that, bring it back down a little bit, yeah, more like and now, I'm not sure if this will work or not, but I want to see if, yeah, and then the bevel tool will work. So that's optional, of course, if you want to do the bevel tool, cool, you don't have to. If you'd rather go in and make either the tiles smaller and they have their own patterns, certainly do that. Or you could do a brick pattern or stone. Um, any type of thing where you just want to bring the corners in so that way you can make more of a diamond pattern within that would probably be awesome show me what you make I'd love to see um, so here I don't think I like the bevel still not quite what I'm going for I'm just gonna leave it like this because it's still nice and rounded and of course I could always either sand it or honestly I'm just gonna be painting in details with this one so I like the generic, just actual tile itself. So this is our nice, what I'm going to do here is change this to 4x4. Four four. And then, oops, what I'm going to do is shift D. And I'm going to move the 4x4 four four over here. And this one. I'm going to change to 4x2 because this is going to be our hallway piece. So right now what we can do is 
go ahead and select all of these hit X to delete save this perfect see and then what you want to do not face it switch that to edge select face And you just want to go along, grab the edges to make boxes, then hit F to fill it in. Three, face. And then at the very last one, you can grab all four edges, hit face, and now you have a hallway piece. Perfect. And then, of course, sometimes you want just a couple things that you can add little um, divots in or something like that. I'm going to okay. Oh, never mind. Shift D that one, and I'm going to take our original four by two. I renamed the wrong one. That's why I'm having issues. Okay. This is the 4x2. That's 4x4. Four four. Oh well. <laughs> I can fix that later. So for this one, what we're going to do tab into this and then all I want to do make sure I don't have anything selected box select that perfect X Faces. Oops. I missed part of that. I need to also get rid of these. There we go. Now I'll go back into Edge Select, which I'm sure you guys get the idea by now. Just go ahead, go along the edge. Perfect. And now you have a 4x4. Four four. I'm sorry, a 2x2. Two two. <laughs> Perfect. So, depending on your printer, you could set up a couple of these and do like two hallways at a time and do four of your two by twos at a time however yep of course you guys can go in chop these pieces up however you need it that'll work and then of course you can even make it much bigger if you have a huge printer by all means go for it this four by four is as large as my print bed can handle that's a very small printer but i love it it's awesome i'm printing on the m3d micro the first one so yeah, it's pretty nice. I hope you guys like this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and comment what else you'd like to see if you want me to go back in and add more detail or you want me to make it interlocking. I'd really love to hear your feedback or if you want me to get back into props or you want to learn how to make walls with this kind of thing and maybe make stone walls with the tile or stone walls with the stone tiles. I'd love to hear your feedback on what you want me to make next. I'll get back to you as soon as I can, and hopefully I'll be posting more videos as soon as possible. I will see you next time.